Hey, here we go now. Hey, everybody. Lee Lowell here, smartoptionseller.com. Today is Saturday, September 26, 2020. Hey, listen, if you're a put option seller and you're working with interactive brokers or you want to be a put option seller, I've been getting some requests from people to show them exactly how I sell put options at interactive brokers, the actual mechanics that I use. What's the steps involved? So I'm going to show you how I do that today. I'll also give you a little cheat sheet on how I actually pick put options to sell. So stick around for that. Um, I'll show you that. So welcome to another edition of the Saturday Synopsis. We like to take a look at the chart, see how the market did over the last week, and see what may come forward in the coming week. So let's dive right and take a look at the charts. We always look at the SPY, Exchange Traded Fund for the SP500. Gives us a broad overview of the overall market. What's been happening the last couple of weeks? Well, we've had this move down the last few weeks after we had hit all-time highs. We've got the 20-day moving average, 50-day moving average. The market has blown through the 20-day and has gone through the 50-day. So that's sort of... Um, telling what's well, been about a 10 percent move uh, for most of the indexes and for a lot of stocks as well um, what happens is we've get this big down move the market has to digest that move does some sideways trading before it figure out where, before it figures out where it wants to go next and that move was down through the 50-day moving average so this past week was a lot of up and down a lot of meandering we had the down move up down up so we finished the week this is the whole week right here meandering again so the market needs to decide where it wants to go next and that's what happens when we get this meandering type of movement will we move down to the 200 day moving average which is like a really big line in the sand i hope not because that means more selling is involved so what i'd like to see is more bottoming action here more sideways action and then the market could get back up to its upward trajectory we definitely need to see the market move above the 50-day moving average. You know, falling below it is a pretty big deal. And so it's still digesting this big move, still trying to figure out where it wants to go. So let's try to see if we can get some more meandering action and then movement to the upside. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ composite it has been the strongest of all the indexes. Had the big move down a few weeks ago, did the meandering broke down through the 50-day moving average and spent this week meandering just like the S&P 500. The good thing is that it had a big move up on Friday, close, you know, still below the 50-day mo moving average, but it's getting closer. So I'd like to see some more meandering here. 200-day moving down here, still sloping upwards, which is good. 50-day still sloping upwards. We've got the 20-day that's curling over to the downside. So that's a little bit telling, but that's on the shorter end of the scale. The 50-day is really what we want to concentrate on here. So let's see if the market could, you know, find its footing, meander a little bit, and then move back higher. That's what I'm hoping for for the next week and forward. Let's take a look at the Dow Industrials, third index we always look at. Same thing, got through the 20-day last week move through the 50-day this week, meandering action. We've got the 200-day, the flat, flat, flat 200-day moving average lurking down here. It's not too far below it, so if it does come down, we should see some good support down here. Um, once again, I, I'm probably guessing we're going to see some more sideways action, still digesting the big down moves over the last few weeks. It's got to find its footing, maybe carve out like a, a curved bottom here. That's how bottomings, uh, long-term bottomings using start, get some meandering and then some curved bottom, bottoming action. So let's see if we could get back above the 50-day moving average as well over the, the next week or so. Take a look at the VIX. We always look at the VIX volatility indicator. Moves inversely to the general market. Had its meandering week as well. Here's the 50-day moving average, this line right here. So the VIX is above the 50-day, just like the market is below the 50-day. They move inversely to each other. So not a lot going on here. Sideways action this week. Option premium still lower than it was coming off the, the big down move in the market, but still above its long-term average here. Um, I'd like to see volatility move back down. That would mean the market is going up. Let's take a couple, uh, let's look at a couple charts of note, some, some big players in the market. We always look at the, these to see what's happening. Apple, and most of these are the tech stocks because these are the ones leading the market. Apple, everyone's favorite. Good thing about Apple, it, it, it was trading below the 50-day moving average line right here. 
but it, you can see it closed just above the 50-day moving average. Let's see if we could expand this a little bit. You can see the little dash on the right side of this bar, and that means a closing price. Closing prices are very important. Closed just above the 50-day moving average, which is a good sign. So hopefully we can, Apple could uh, keep moving up next week and, and pull the rest of the market with it. Let's take a look at Amazon. Of course, another biggie. Amazon's closed below the 50-day moving average for a while now. Um, trying to move back up as well, still below it. Um, Amazon's a little weaker than Apple, but let's hope that next week it either meanders or moves back up. Uh, let's take a look at what else we have. Um, Google as well, another big player. Now Google has blown through all the moving averages and has landed right on support, right on the 200 day moving average. This is critical right here. We really don't want to see Google move down below it because that could drag everything else with it. So let's see if the 200 day moving average holds. We've got one, two, three, about three or four days where it just bounced off this 200 day moving average. Let's see if it could move its way back up. Uh, Microsoft, another one. Microsoft had a good day on Friday, moving back up moving back towards the 20 day and the 50 day if it could blast through both of these that would be a very good sign facebook is you know same as the others came down through both moving averages sideways action here let's see if it could kind of have a little bottoming action here and move back higher tesla look at tesla Tesla's been strong, stronger the strongest of some of these stocks bounce right off the 50 day moving average uh, on Thursday had a good bounce. So Tesla is still pretty strong. People like it. So good bounce here. Let's see. Maybe Tesla could could lead the market higher come next week. A um, couple other charts of note I want to show you in the metals market, gold and silver. I want to show you how these patterns work very well. Uh, could give you an idea how how to play a market. Let's take a look at silver because that was very pronounced in silver called a triangle pattern triangle pattern right here that means the market starts out wide and then the ranges get tighter and tighter and tighter until it reaches the apex here and it's got all this energy that's coiling up and wants to bust out just not sure which way it's going to bust out yet but when it finally busts out either higher or lower it tends to keep moving in that direction for a number of days you can see how silver just blast it to the downside it's just expending all that energy same thing with gold but not as pronounced Let's take a look at gold these are the futures we just looked at silver futures this is the gold futures for december december gold futures same thing it's coiling up into the triangle pattern and then it blasts it out to the downside so these patterns work people if you know your chart patterns um, you can find these on charts all the time and, and they work pretty well we've talked about bull flags in the in the past this is a triangle pattern so keep in keep a watch out for those kind of pattern so that's it for the market assessment as like i said next week let's pull up the spy one more time market still digesting the down moves, still trying to figure out what it wants to do let's hope for some way more meandering sideways action and then the market could kind of find its footing and move back up so that's it for the market assessment so let's talk about the options information today put options selling that is what we do here at the Smart Option Seller. We are put option sellers, our bread and butter. And people have asked me, they want to know what the mechanics are of selling a put option at Interactive Brokers. Interactive Brokers is, is, is a broker that um, you can trade through. I use them. A lot of people use them. They want to know how to do it. So let's pull up our Interactive Brokers um, screens here. Um, this is the classic TWS trader workstation down here it says classic TWS that stands for trader workstation and there's other tabs here um, you can configure the screens any way you like this is the options trading uh, tab here's something called mosaic I stick with the classic only because I've been using interactive brokers for so long I'm just so used to it now what you can do is you can um, you can pull up stocks and options you can uh, type them in here and you get the quotes here so it seems like uh, Saturday today interactive brokers is not showing the bid and ask left over from Friday they usually have the market quotes here let's take a look at the this is the options trader part of interactive brokers another way you can look at option chains this is what I really like about interactive brokers we got calls on the left puts on the right uh, as I said okay so we've got the uh, last prices showing up but typically they have the bid and ask prices left over from uh, Friday session not showing up here, but that's okay. We're going to look at um, 
we can go back to our charting package. We're going to look at e-signal, and here's their option chain uh, for e-signal. And we're going to uh, show you. I'm going to show you how I sell a put option, pick a put option, and then how I I do it in Interactive Brokers. But first, let's take a look at my cheat sheet again. I always have a cheat sheet for you on the steps to selling put options. Now, remember, if you're a put option seller, what you're doing, you're actually obligating yourself to potentially buy a stock in the future at a price of your choosing, which is a good thing. There's a stock that you want. You don't want to buy it at its current price. You want to buy it at a potentially lower price. You could do that by selling a put option. So here's my, my four-step process for selling put options. Number one, you want to pick a quality stock that you would like to buy at a reduced price from where the stock currently trades now. So you're looking to potentially buy the stock later on at a lower price. You're going to choose an expiration date two to four months out in time. Shorter the better. As option sells, we always like shorter time frames, but that doesn't always mean it's better. Uh, let me take that back. Shorter is better, yes, but it has to it has to meet the other requirements for selling the proper uh, strike price. So we want to choose an expiration date. In my opinion, this is my sweet spot, two to four months out in time. Uh, if I can get the two month that's expiration, I will do it. You're going to choose an out of the money strike price with a 20% cushion below the current price of the stock. When I go through the example, I'll show you what that means. And we're going to look for uh, a credit of 25 to 30 cents when we actually sell that put option. So this is a very conservative strategy. We like to play it very safe. These are hitting singles. We're not going for home runs here. So we're playing very safe. And these type of trades usually lead to probability of profit of 90% or greater. Now, when I say probability of profit, there's two things that could happen when you sell a put option. You're either going to have to buy the stock if the stock comes down to your strike price or the option will expire worthless. So there's there's two ways that you can play it. Now, typically the way we do it is most of the time we will buy the option back at a very cheap price and lock in our profits or the, the option will expire. So that's what I mean when a probability of profit. Um, that means if you sell this the put option here and you buy it back here at a lower price, you're going to lock in your profit. So that's 90% of the time you're going to lock in that profit that way. On the off chance, you will get assigned meaning that you will have to buy the stock as long as you want to do that. So here's your four step process. We're going to take a look at the charts and see what we want to do. Now, uh, we're talking about examples only. This is not a real recommendation. This is not a real recommendation. I'm just showing you examples. We're going to look at Walmart. Here's a chart of Walmart. Now, if I was interested in potentially buying Walmart, you know, of course, I can go out and just buy it at its current stock price. You buy it right at it closed at 137.27 on Friday, yesterday, September 25th, 2020. I can go out and buy the shares. But for me, I'm thinking, you know what? Maybe I want to try to buy Walmart somewhere down here below the 200 day moving average. I really want to get it at a really cheap price. I want to get it at a discount. And so what would I do? I, I could sell a put option at a strike price down here somewhere, which means Walmart would have to fall all the way down here before I would actually get a chance to buy the shares of stock. Now, one of the, my rules is that I, I look for at least a 20% cushion below the current price of the stock. So here's current price of stock, 137. 20% below that's about $26.27 um, below the current price. So we're looking at maybe uh, 26, so maybe 100, 110 strike price, at least 110 strike price. That'd be about 20% below. So my first inkling would, would be to look for a strike price uh, at the 110 level two to four months out in time and receiving a 25 to 30 cent credit. So let's go back to um, our option chain here. We're going to look at option chain and then we're going to pull up interactive brokers and show you how we actually sell it. Um, Walmart now. So we want to go to two, four, two to four months out in time. So let's take a look at, we can look at November and December. So that's roughly, you know, within our time range and it'll pull up the options. Now here, uh, put options on the right. Now, uh, eSignal has all the, the prior days information, bid S prices. So we got November, you can see down here, this is November, 2020. And then a little further down, we have the December options down here. So we wanna see what the 110 puts are trading for um, in either November or December, cause that's our 20% cushion, the November strike. Uh, the 110s, so we've got a couple different uh, same strike prices. These are for the different expiration dates within each month. Uh, we have weekly options that trade. 
So we're looking at the, the normal third Friday of the month expiration, and that would be the November 110 puts right here. So close at 48 cent bid at 55 cent offer. Now we can even go down to the 105 puts, even get more uh, cushion. That's 25 cent, 45 cent offer. So right there in the middle is where you always want to try to trade in between the bid and ask. 25 cent bid, 45 cent offer. So we could probably sell these 105 puts at 35 cents a contract. That would meet our requirements, which is a good thing. Now let's go to uh, Interactive Brokers and take a look at the option chain for Walmart. Got Walmart pulled up here. Here's November. So the date would be November 20th, 2020. The other date of November is November 6th. So you get these weekly options that trade uh, weekly. This is the, our, the normal uh, expiration. Now we can do the drop down. And when it says regular, that means the regular monthly third Friday of the month expiration. But you can choose any one of these other weekly expirations if you want. So we're looking at November 20, 55 days out. And for Walmart, we were looking at the 105 puts. So they closed on Friday at 39 cents a contract. Okay, the bid and ask quotes are not shown here for Interactive Brokers, but we just saw it was a 25 cent bid, 45 cent offer in our e-signal. So if we wanted to actually sell these, which would meet the requirements, 105 puts has a nice cushion below the, the last price of Walmart showing up here at 136.70. And that's about a, the 105 is about a $31 cushion below that. So that's well over 20%. That's maybe about 22% or so. So if we were to sell these 105 puts, there's two ways we can do it in Interactive Brokers. We're in the Options Trader tab. What we would do is, you know, the, the, the numbers aren't showing here, but we click on the bid price, okay, and that will bring up another screen right here. So since you want to sell these, you, you click on the bid price, and that will invoke a sell order, and it'll bring up a trading ticket like this, and it'll show you what you want to do. Before you do it, you can check all the numbers. It already defaults to the sell ticket. It's got the little dot here. If I was to buy it, this black circle would be in the buy side. So it already defaults to sell. You can change the quantities. Okay, you can use these up arrows, down arrows, change your quantities. It's a limit price. So we're going to sell it at a limit price of 35 cents a contract. We're going to just type that in. Okay, 35 cents. And it's going to be, the destination is smart. That means the, the, the um, software will choose the best option exchange to send the order. And you, if you want to have a good till canceled, you can change that to good till canceled. Now you click on preview right here, preview button down here, and it's going to tell you what you're about to do before you actually send the order. Uh, we got a little warning here. Don't have to worry about that. So it's telling you, you're going to sell three contracts of the Walmart November 20th, 105 puts, and your price is 35 cents a contract. That's what you're going to want to do. And typically they would have the information down here, how much you're going to collect and what the uh, margin, uh, your margin requirement would be. But for whatever reason, um, Interactive Brokers is not showing this today. So we're going to close it out because we're not going to actually uh, launch the trade. Now, we can also create that same trade in the main home screen here. Now, let me go to a new screen here and actually go back to this one. Um, so if you want to follow a quote, you would just type in the symbol. You click in any, any line here, okay? Type in Walmart, WMT for Walmart. We want to see the stock price at least. Okay, now if trading was active, we'd get the bid and ask prices and all that. Market is not open right now. Now if we want to follow this, the option contract, type in Walmart again. At this time, we choose options. And it's going to bring up this window here, and you're going to choose uh, the option that we want to follow. We're going to look at the November contracts and the 105 puts. Just click on it, and it'll bring up the it'll bring up the contract right here. Okay, so now you have not only Walmart stock, but you have the contract that you can follow. It'll have the bid and ask quotes uh, all day long. Here's where it closed yesterday on Friday. So during the day, during market action, you can see the bid and ask. And if you wanted to invoke an order from this screen, all you have to do is. Click on the bid price again, like I showed you, and it will bring up the screen. So you can actually invoke the order from the main screen here, or you can invoke the order from the uh, option trader screen here. 
like I said, you want you click on the bid price. Okay, if you want to sell, you can see the little sell. Uh, if I move it over to the ask, it'll change the blue for buy, sell is red. So you click on the bid price when there would be a bid price in there, and it'll bring up the order screen here, order ticket. So there you go. That's it's very simple. Okay, so interactive brokers, you have a couple different ways. You can use the option trader. You can use the main screen. You can choose an options trading tab, so you can configure these windows. You have the the options uh, trader screen here and you can do a chart and all these other things or the mosaic you can you know change all these windows so it's very configurable like I said I default to the classic TWS just because I've been using it for so long so that's what I do all right so there you go that's how you do it that's how I sell put options at interactive brokers let's go back to our cheat sheet here remember when you're selling put options, you need to stick with stocks that you have a genuine interest in potentially buying. You don't want to sell put options on stocks just, just to get the premium. That's not how you do it. Uh, you can get in trouble by doing that. You choose an expiration date two to four months out in time, shorter the better, as long as you can still get the 20% cushion and a 25 to 30 cent credit when you sell those put options, okay? And those typically lead to a 90% or greater probability of profit. Now, how do I know that? Well, another thing we can do is we can go up to our probability calculator and that tells us, um, you know, our chances of the stock moving to uh, the expiration, uh, moving down to the, the, the level that uh, we're interested in buying it. So let's take, let me see how many days we're left. So 55 days. So when we go into our probability calculator, we I'm putting in the stock price of Walmart. So 137 expiration date of November, 55 days ahead. Volatility for Walmart's about 30%. Now we want to know is what are the chances of Walmart falling down to $105? Because that's the strike price that we're choosing. This will tell you what your chances are of that happening. Click on go. So what the probability calculator is telling us is that there's only a 1.1% chance that Walmart will fall from $137 down to $105 in the next 55 days. So that's telling you, you, you only have a 1% chance that you're going to be able to buy Walmart at $105. Conversely, there's a 98.8% chance that Walmart will stay above $105 over the next 55 days. And if that happens, that's fine. The option will just expire worthless and you'll keep the money, you'll keep your 35 cents that you collected by selling that put option. That's what I mean. We usually have a 90% or greater probability of profit. We have, in this case, it's a 98.8% probability of profiting on that trade. And by that, I mean, you're gonna sell the option at 35 cents and most likely it's either gonna expire worthless or you can buy it back for nickel and lock in your 30 cent profit. That's 30 actual dollars for every contract that you sell. So probability calculator, good thing um, to help you gauge the the, the probability of a stock moving from point A to point B. And in this case, there's only 1% chance of Walmart falling that far. So looks like you won't be able to buy a stock at 105, but at least you'll make 35 bucks per contract uh, in the process. Okay, so that is that is the information for today. Uh, we looked at the charts, we looked at selling options, at selling put ons at interactive brokers. That'll pretty much do it for me. Remember, um, if you like this video, please, please, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button in, in the uh, bottom right corner of the screen you're watching. Hit that red subscribe button. Uh, that way you'll be notified every time I put out a new video every week. Send me a comment. Write a comment below as well. Uh, also, uh, send me an email. If you have any questions, I'll always answer. You can email here. You can comment in the comments about your question. You can email me. Also, don't forget to go to our website, okay? Put Selling Basics, our free Put Selling Basics guide. It tells you all about how to sell put options. You can actually click on the, the um, tab here, or you can just put your name and address, email address in here. Put Selling Basics guide. We'll bring you up to the other page, tell you about this guide that we've written. Get it for free. Lastly, don't forget our services tab. Smart Option Seller Newsletter, Vertical Spread Trader Newsletter, all about selling put options, and our one-on-one -one, one -on -one coaching if you need some uh, personal attention on to get your trading option trading to the next level. Okay, that's it for me today. 
Uh, have a good weekend, everybody. Have a great week trading ahead, and I will see you next Saturday. This is Lee Lowell signing off.